Lord God, we just praise you. Thank you for this time that we can come together. Lord, we just pray that you would be with us today and help us to have a great day, Lord, that we can learn about you and from you in your word. So Lord, we pray, praise you and thank you for all that you are and all that you do. We thank you for the gift of grace through Jesus by faith. Lord. So Lord, we praise you and we thank you. In your name we pray, amen. All right, let's do this. Ugh. All right, starting at verse 10. Finally, be strengthened by the Lord and by his vast strength. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this darkness, against evil spiritual forces in the heavens. For this reason, take up the full armor of God so that you may be able to resist in the evil day and having prepared everything to take your stand. Stand therefore with truth, with truth like a belt around your waist, righteousness like armor on your chest, and your feet sandaled with readiness for the gospel of peace. In every situation, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray at all times in the spirit with every prayer and request and stay alert <clears throat> with all perseverance and intercession for all the saints. Pray also for me that the message may be given to me when I open my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of of the gospel for this I am an ambassador in chains pray that I might be be bold enough to speak about it as I should and we'll chill there okay hey so the armor as a whole right right you have to have it as a whole because if one part fails the whole thing fails right that's the reality that's why it starts the way it starts you know it tells us what the battle is where the fight's taking place, which is the spiritual realm, you know? It's the battlefield of the mind, the spiritual mind, not just like, you know, your brain, this three pound mass inside your head, you know? It's, it's on the spiritual level where the fight is really taking place, you know, and it will manifest physically. You can see the physical effects of the spiritual world. You know, we tend to try to ignore those things because we don't, either we don't want to believe that the spiritual is real or we don't want to acknowledge that there's actually a fight going on, you know? And I think each and every one of us in this room can recognize that we've been fighting some sort of battle, right? That's what you're here for. You're here to fight a battle and learn how to fight it better. And that's why this armor is so important because while it is like Kenny said, it's the life of a believer in Christ. It is the covering of Christ that you know, covers us also is our offense, which is the sword, the word of God. Who's the word of God? Jesus. The whole armor together needs to be put on. You can't just put on one piece and think, oh, I'm good. No, you got to put on the whole thing. And it says put on the full armor of God. Okay, we're also, when he's talking about armor of God, you can go back to Isaiah and you can see that God puts on armor <laughs> when he's coming to war against people and it's in like isaiah 59 so it describes that he's putting on this armor and he's going to come and exact punishment or bring righteousness onto people you know but you see that god is putting on armor and it's really cool to think that god is putting on armor so that he can come with war it's just like jesus you know the sword comes out of his mouth because he is the word of god so when he's returning he is destroying bringing wrath with his words you know so we need to stand firm right this is the one one of those things that we hear throughout the bible standing firm especially in the new testament it's talked about constantly jesus mentions it all the time is standing firm okay what does it mean it means to be firmly planted standing your ground you know just like peter talks about is having a defense for what you believe and this is why we do like the truth project you know, it teaches you the, the, the things behind what you believe. You know, just what after Truth Project, what we'll go into after that is called Not Enough Faith to Be an Atheist. 
It gives you the logical and reasonable evidences for what you believe and teaches you how to present those. So that's one of the things that we do with the armor of God. We put all these things on so that we can stand firm, so that we can go against the prince of the power of the air, the devil, and we can fight against the schemes that he's constantly trying to throw at us. Okay, like each part of this armor has a specific use, right? All right, you see, where does he start with? It starts with the belt of truth, right? So he starts with the belt of truth. The belt of truth, one, is describing just truth because truth holds the entire armor together, just like the belt would do, right? Because if you haven't got the belt, stuff's going to be falling off. We all know that. If you're not wearing the, uh, the breastplate, right, your heart is not going to be protected. You know, the vital organs will not be protected. And that's why when you see even bulletproof vests today, they cover the vital organs. Okay? Now, that's what they're designed to do, so we need to be able to, to protect our heart because what is the heart? It's deceitfully wicked above all things. This is what the scripture tells us, you know, that we have hearts that want to go after wickedness. So we need to cover them with righteousness and it's the righteousness of Christ that it is covered with. You know, so <clears throat> with the feet, right? Right, we need to protect our feet. Right, walking around without shoes, we know we can step on some crazy stuff, especially around Boise. I mean, we can step on some needles. That's not fun. Okay. And we got to protect our feet. You know, and it's also the reason they wore shoes was so that they could have that good footing. Their sandals typically had some spikes on them so that they would kind of dig into the ground a little bit. But it was literally just a sandal with some like, you know, sole leather sole on there that was thin enough that they could still kind of fill the ground enough but they had little spikes kind of like cleats today you know not only were they great for stomping your enemy they were great for holding your ground and being able to get good footing when you're running right this is why athletes wear cleats you know so they can have a sure footing <clears throat> You know, but it's also with the gospel of peace. Because as believers, what are we supposed to be doing? We're supposed to be proclaiming the gospel, right? We're supposed to be going into all the world, every tribe, tongue, nation, presenting the gospel and telling people that Jesus lived, died, rose, and has paid the price so that you could be set free. Right, your chains have already been broken. You just need to let them go. You now that's the gospel of peace. You now taking up the shield, right? The shield is that defensive thing that you can also use offensively, right? This is what the Romans did. We've all seen the movie 300, right? And they did that type of stuff. It was real. They would lock shields together. They would move as one. They would use these shields for everything. You know, but in this circumstance, it's saying, look, it's so you can be shielded against what the devil is hurling at you. The devil doesn't want to see you guys complete this stuff. He doesn't want to see you in the Word. He doesn't want to see you learning from us. He doesn't want to see you graduating this program and going on to be an amazing person in society, living for Jesus, and doing what, what the gospel has called you to do, you know? So he's going to hurl all these things at you. You need to be working. You need to be taking care of your family. You shouldn't be here. You know, your family is doing horribly without you. How many of, how much of that we know is just not true. Our families, as far as I've been able to tell, have been doing fine. You know, we've been okay without a job for right now. You know, so the devil's going to try and throw these things at us, thinking that, man, this is this this will keep him from moving forward in in the Lord. And it has done that to people. We've seen that happen, right? Even this group, we've seen people leave because they're like, man, I got to work. 
I gotta work. I gotta be able to do this, 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 this. People in this room have said it. You know, so we need to be able to extinguish those, those darts that Satan is just throwing at us, that he's firing at us. You know, so we take up the shield of faith. We need to have faith that God is in control and that he is going to provide. If he can provide salvation through Jesus, he can provide for everything else. <clears throat> and the helmet. What's the helmet good for? Check your head. Victory. Check your head. Right? All right, the helmet of salvation is kind of like what, what he's saying. Is to know that we have victory already. And know that we are more than conquerors in Christ. And know that we can stand firm in him. Right? But it also protects our thoughts. Because, right? Our thoughts, our mind, our process, our heart, they kind of work together, right? Because when you talk about, oh man, my heart, we're not talking about the, you know, the thing inside your chest that's about that big that pumps blood. You know, we're talking about the, con the consciousness, the mind, the heart. That's what the Bible is saying when it uses the word heart. Okay? Saying protect that. So not only are you protect, you're protecting it two ways. You're protecting it vitally, but you're also protecting it spiritually. By remembering that you have salvation in Christ and in Christ alone. Right? That's what it is doing. It is protecting us. It is helping defeat against those thoughts that are going to be try, that are going to be trying to be implanted within our minds. Now, and then you have the sword of the spirit. What is that? pretty sure you all know it because y'all got one sitting in front of you you know but the sword of the spirit we all know it to be the word of god because when it describes jesus coming back in revelation it says that a sword comes out of his mouth signifying that this is the sword of the spirit it is the word of god coming out you know that he is god and he is about to speak okay it says that says that the word can cut very deep to the separation of soul soul and body to the separation of bone and marrow this word cuts deep and we can feel it sometimes right when we're talking about things about the bible or reading the bible we're like dang ouch <laughs> like it's convicting when we're reading it and we're not living according to what it says right it's convicting telling us you're jacked up screwed up and messed up and you need a savior but so many people don't want to don't want to have to give their lives up. They want to live their sinful life. They want to live for themselves. They want to do the things they want to do, right? And so we are supposed to be using the word of God. Like we learned about in Conquer series. Some of you guys haven't gone through that yet, and we will again. But the word here it, for the for the word word is called Rhema. It's a really cool word. I mean, not only was it describing like a the short sword that they used in battle. You know, because you had a shorter sword, you could actually maneuver it when you're in close quarter battle. You know, instead of having like the big broad swords, you know, like the, the Braveheart sword, which is really cool and I want one. But, you know, it's, it's just saying that it cuts deep and that it can be used not only defensively, but offensively. Because when you see that Jesus is getting tempted by the devil, what does he do? He uses the word of God against the devil, even though the devil was trying to skew the word of God to Jesus. Jesus is like, dude, I'm the one who spoke this. Why are you trying to even <laughs> tell me what it says? Oh, Jesus is like, thus says the Lord. And he quotes scripture against the devil. And finally the devil flees. It goes away, right? We have that same power. That's why we have the word of God. This is why we meditate on it. This is why we teach from it. This is why we read it constantly. You know, this is one of the reasons that Adam's going to start doing classes on books of the Bible. You know, we want to get deep into this. We want to know the genuine article of scripture and of Jesus. Because if we know the genuine article, 
then we know what's a counterfeit, right? Just like in banks, what do they do? They don't learn what fakes are. They learn what the real thing is. They know what it feels like. They know how much it weighs. They know all the little intricate parts of it. And when the fake thing comes across their desk, they're like, instantly know this is fake. Okay, you have to have a really good counterfeit in order for them to believe that it's a real deal. And you can almost not even get that close. There have been several people that have really gotten pretty close because somehow they managed to get like the paper and a print, but there were still things that were off and they got caught. You know, so we try to know the genuine article instead of the counterfeit. And it's good to learn about, you know, what the cults believe and what other, other religions believe, you know, so that we can learn how to combat against those and teach the truth. You know, so we learn what the genuine article is, what the word of God actually says, who Jesus really is, so that we can stand firm against the evil powers. All right. And then we have prayer. Praying at all times, making, making requests and supplications. Okay, Justin and I talked about this the other day. You know, he wanted to know what, uh, what's supplication? Well, we found out that, right, Justin, that it's a deep, deep prayer, like deeply, like coming before God in humility and just really pouring it out to him. Man, God, I really, really need, th need, need this. But it's, you know, it's not doing it in selfish ways. You know, it's like a deep groaning towards what you want to want to accomplish in the will of God, right? Because we need to be in prayer when it comes to the will of God, asking for things in God's will, not in our will. Oh, God, I really want that Hummer. I just really want a Hummer. So I always use Hummer as the, as the <laughs> you know, but it's coming to him with, with God, I really want to be able to present your word well. God, I really want to be able to share the gospel well. God, I really want to be able to go out and proclaim your word to anybody and everybody I come across. God, I really want my family to come to you through faith in Christ. God, I know that you can heal. And I'm asking that you please heal my family member who is suffering that's what I did when I found out there were issues with my first, my first daughter. I prayed fervently for healing. You know, he healed her, but not in the way I was hoping for, right? He gave her complete and full healing by bringing her home to him instead of home to me. You know, but sometimes that's how it works. We ask for healing, and sometimes that means he's going to call him home. And then you have full and complete healing. You know, and we know that God can heal today. You know, so we pray and we pray fervently. We pray at all times. It's supposed to be a continual all day long conversation with God. Right? At any moment, you can just start, you know, God, what's up? You know, start talking to him. You might look ridiculous, but you don't have to be running your mouth when you're doing it. You can do it in your mind. Know how much I talk to myself in my head? You probably think I'm crazy. When I'm alone, I will have out loud conversations. It's kind of weird, but I do it. And they say people who actually do that are probably geniuses. And I'm like, you guys are lying because I ain't no genius, you know? But still, it's an ongoing conversation with God, constantly praying to him, constantly asking, constantly going, what do you want me to do? What do you need me to do? What, how can I serve you today? How can I administer to the body of Christ today? Okay, it's a constant praying. And that's why Paul even asked for prayer in regards to what he's doing, you know, that he may have boldness. Okay, the prayer that he's asking for us for him can also be applied to us. You know, God, I need, I need boldness today so that I can proclaim your word. You know, imagine if it's that time where, where, Christians in America are getting more and more persecuted and they're putting you in chains like Paul was. You know, are you going to be in the prison chained up and willing to continue to serve God, proclaiming the gospel? And that's what he's asking for. He's like, I don't want to 
I don't want to stop doing that. That's why I need prayer from you guys. So continue to pray for him. Pray for your brothers and sisters that they may present the gospel in boldness and in faith and in truth. You know? You know, being that ambassador in chains if you must. You know, because one day we will be thrown in jail for our, for our belief in Christ. Because we will stand against what everyone else is doing and they're going to hate it. They already hate it, right? You mention anything that's biblical against what the world teaches, automatically you're labeled a bigot and intolerant. Racist, sexist. Racist, sexist, any other name they can throw at you. You know, but we still stand because Jesus even said the world is going to hate you because it hated me first. And it's true. You can talk about God all you want. You bring Jesus into the conversation. People get mad. It's just the truth. People get mad when you bring Jesus into the conversation. Now you can believe it. You can talk about God. We can be, we can be spiritual. We can't talk about Jesus because I don't know about that guy. I mean, that's the savior of the world. I'm going to talk about him. I'm going to talk about him all the time. Period. You're going to have to chop off my head to shut me up. End of story. That's the way it needs to be. For every believer. You will proclaim the gospel of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection until your very last breath. It don't matter if they're chopping your head off. You should be praising Jesus. Now to finish this out, since this part is pretty simple. <clears throat> Tychicus, our dearly loved brother and faithful servant in the Lord, will tell you all the news about me. So he's talking about Paul. He's going to go tell him what Paul's doing. I am sending him to you for this very reason, to let you know how we are and to encourage you. So the brother is going to go encourage the other brothers and sisters. Right? This is a good thing. We need to be doing that. We need to encourage one another. You know, stop thinking you're in this alone. Because you're not. Okay? Peace to the brothers and sisters and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all who have undying love for our Lord Jesus Christ. That part is beautiful. That's a fantastic way to end a letter. Right? Peace, love, faith, grace, and then he takes it further, undying love. You know, it's a beautiful way to end it. And I don't think I even need to talk about it because honestly, it says it all for itself. And let's just read it one more time. Let it really sink in. Peace to the brothers and sisters and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all who have undying love for our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray. So... Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for what's been penned down for us to have in front of us, Lord. Lord, may we take up the full armor that you provide. Lord, may we just hold fast in the evil day. And Lord, may we stand firm in faith in Christ, just no matter what. So Lord, we praise you. We thank you. And we ask that you be with us the rest of this day, guiding and directing us as we go forward. In your name, Jesus, amen.